Hello and welcome to this episode of Witch on Witch. Today I am joined by Sigrun. Hello, ma'am. Thank you for joining me. Would you like to tell everyone uh, who you are and what you do? Hi, I'm Sigrun Gregerson. Um, I do prepping videos and uh, pagan videos on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called uh, The Pagan Prepper and Universal Pagan Temple. Um, I am a practicing witch rune witch um and i have written uh, several books um one with freya aswin and um i do rune readings and my husband uh, gregory does tarot readings and you can find us on our channel fantastic and i know you're available on youtube and i've also seen you on see is it bit shoot rumble and odyssey is it all yep, three that's, yep that's all those others yep so you see, fellas, if uh, if YouTube decides it doesn't like Sigrun or myself, you can find us everywhere. The tech giants yeah. do not boss us around. <laughs> All righty. So today, uh, essentially what we're talking about is looking at the world and the religious landscape and um, possibilities for the future through pagan eyes. We hear from the Christians all the time. We hear from other Abrahamic traditions, atheists and agnostics. But uh, this is a pagan space, so we are focused on how we are seeing things today. So on that note, let's just kind of dive in with uh, what we think paganism has to offer when it comes to addressing modern day problems, because everybody is going back to their spirituality and uh, we may as well too. So I'll let you take first crack at that. All righty. Well, since uh, we're in crazy times right now with basically we're going into an economic uh, recession and maybe even depression. We might be going towards um, religious faiths. Um, now, in paganism, they don't really like to use the word religion. Spirituality, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it. They're going to be going back to that. And we need to be there um, as educators, you and I both, um, to provide uh, education on just the basics um, for these people. And then also, you know, we provide um, a lot of uh, reassurance um, in that regard. And another thing um, kind of important to uh, bring up before I lose my train of thought here is, um, is that uh sorry i'm a little add right now let me uh go look the <laughs> that's perfectly fine this is the show where we lose our train of thought and we just spin around until we pick it up later so right modern day up. Yeah, modern day problems. All righty. Can you tell that when I do a video, I've got uh, notes right in front of me, so I stay on track. Um, oh, you and me both. So <laughs> I'm, right, I'm right there with you. <laughs> Doing conversations is still super new for me. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So modern day problems, you know, let's say if uh, there's an issue revolving around the environment, um, a pagan might have a different perspective than an atheist or a Christian or a Muslim or a Buddhist, our mindset is more um, of the balance of nature. We try to be balanced within nature. And where we kind of separate from you and I, from other pagans is that we're conservative. So when we are conservative, we're kind of looking deeper than just uh, using our emotions to govern us. Uh, we're not completely governed by uh, the element of water. We have the fire of passion, but we also have the practicality of earth and the intellect of air. So we're trying to embody all the four elements instead of just uh, being passionate and fiery like the liberals are. So yeah. 
<laughs> it makes a lot of difference with that because our society right now is just so driven on on water and fire, as you say, the emotion and the passion. And these make excellent fuels. I mean, if you have a clear objective in mind, those can will definitely take you to where they go, but they suck as a steering wheel. <laughs> and I think that's where a lot of people have gone wrong. They've been trying to use it as a steering wheel. Just no, no, I don't think that it'll work terribly well like that. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Where, you know, we can kind of bring in, well, instead of uh, letting our emotions guide us through a environmental issue, you know, where we feel that uh, the mother goddess is hurting, let's actually go and talk to um, the professionals, the people that have worked in these fields for, you know, 40, 50 years and see what they have to say. Um because they have a lot of input that uh, me, myself, I would never think of. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to jump to conclusions saying, oh, well, uh, this farmer here, this farmer is bad. Um, this farmer is hurting the environment. Well, let's talk to the farmer and see what he's actually doing. Let's talk to the little guy, the guy that's actually uh, working there every single day. And he's been there for you know, like I said, 40, 50 years, or he's generational. Because that's something that, uh, you know, you hear uh, some witches brag that they're uh, um, come from a long line of witches. Some people a long line of farmers. And uh, remember, the first uh, kind of a witchy book out there wasn't even necessarily a witchy book. I'm talking about modern day. Mm -hmm. Available to the common person, The Farmer's Almanac. You know, yeah, I had thought of it that way before, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, pagan uh, traditionally means country dweller. So there you go. To go talk to the uh, the farmers if you feel like uh, they're producing too much, uh, you know, emissions with their farm vehicles. I mean, how are you going to feed yourself if you're not talking to these these farmers that are in tune with the land even more than you know some pagans like to think they are yeah i i do think there's a major disconnect between how connected we think we are and then how connected we actually are and that can take us to pretty uncomfortable territory to meditate upon because yeah i think i think most of us try i mean even people who have you know gone a bit off the rails in their pagan path i think they are at least trying i do think for the most part with a few notable exceptions that their intentions are pure and so you know, it's uh, I guess it requires us to have a little bit more humility, a little bit more of that element of air and also that element of earth saying, OK, maybe I screwed up and maybe I should be looking at things through a more uh, practical lens. And that's kind of where my own thoughts took me on this particular question is I do think that paganism in general offers a very pragmatic philosophy. It's it's not just this is not the pathway of how we create utopia, because <laughs> uh, <laughs> in case anyone hasn't noticed from the myths, the gods are not offering us utopia. They're not even saying that is a possibility, not for them, not for us, not for, you know, the field mouse, you know, in the middle of the cornfield. Right. It just That's not something that exists within nature. But they said, but there are th practical things you can do. How do things actually work? You can understand that. And the more you understand, the more you can affect your own environment. So I think that's a big, huge one that we have really in our in our pockets to offer the rest of the world, as well as the emphasis on practical action. I've gotten yelled at about this in certain circles, but I keep saying, OK, what you believe is all very nice, but what do you do? Please right. tell me, what do you do? <laughs> because without the ad action, it's just it's incomplete. I mean, you can have the most beautiful thought and vision in your head in the world, but without the doing, uh, it only goes so far. And that's another thing that as we uh, get more and more into the doing as pagans, especially when that becomes much more common in our own circles, I think we can set a good example for the rest of the world about, OK, what did you actually do to fix the problem? <laughs> Right. You sound like my husband there. Um, he's very much a, a Torian and he's all about doing things practically. You know what? How are you going to accomplish this? You know, that's a nice thought that you have there, but uh, how are you going to do it and how are you going to fund it? Um, because, you know, every, that money mindset of how are you going to pay for this? Um, I remember him years ago. Uh, 
complaining about, uh, you know, what about all these people out there without jobs? What are you, how are you going to feed these people? Uh, it just goes into that. And uh, this, this practical mindset needs to be uh, common sense. That, yes, let's make it common again. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, so that takes me into a little bit uh, kind of the next thought that I had on this is about in paganism, we have kind of a decentralized power structure, not only when it comes to worship, because no one pagan is really answerable to another. I mean, we can have arguments amongst ourselves, but no one has actual power and to dictate what you may or may not do. But also I was thinking you know, within the gods, you know, because we're most of us are polytheistic, you know, different gods had different areas of concern. They were more interested in certain things. They had weaknesses in certain areas. So there was never one person who ran every single aspect of the show, which is probably one of the reasons why the first uh, republics we saw in history came from pagan societies. And why maybe our own society, because uh, so many people are primarily monotheistic, why we are struggling a little bit with that, because their natural instinct is to centralize power, centralize authority, because essentially that's what their scriptures teach them. But for us, we're saying, you know, no one is exactly made the same. Uh, no one is good at every single thing. Maybe we need to divide up these tasks. Maybe it's better if power is limited. <laughs> you know, maybe just if it's good enough for system for the gods, maybe it's plenty good enough for us just tossing out ideas there. I think uh, our our way of thinking really holds the key towards any ideas we might have about restoring the Republic. Right, yeah, that is a uh, brilliant analogy where, yes, the uh, the gods of the uh, Norse pantheon, you got uh, Odin at the head, and he's uh, the god of death, but the god of wisdom and knowledge, um, also warfare, um, and then you've got uh, goddesses. Um, you have the split of the gods and uh, gods and goddesses on this side and gods and goddesses on that side, the Vanir and the Azir. Um, and there's more like, uh, you know, our modern um, <laughs> political parties, which are not getting along, but in the story it shows in the mythology that they actually do get along. I mean, mm -hmm. there was a war, but then they eventually got along to work on a common goal, which was pretty much preparing for uh, Ragnarok or any issues with the uh, the Jotuns um, or uh, any other issues like from freaking Loki. Um, and then you have the Egyptian. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the Egyptian pantheon, um, which had some people will take a very shallow approach to it and say, oh, Ra was the king of the gods. Well, no, there was different pantheons throughout the Nile. You know, there was the, uh, um, the cult of Ptah um, and his wife, uh, Sakmet, um, the cult of uh, Amun and his wife, Mut, I believe, um, and Ra, and then you had uh, the... Aset worship. I won't use her English name because that might sent, set off the uh, censors on YouTube. Um, she's the wife of Osiris and mother of Horus, in case uh, you're wondering who I'm referring to. Um, yeah, I, uh, I have a bone to pick with a particular organization that brought her name into disrepute, but uh, <laughs> move, moving along. <laughs> <laughs> right, I uh, did a video on her years ago and it was removed by youtube for um just because of the name yeah. see this is why we shouldn't permit the the machines to even pretend to think for us but you know, I like that the fact that you're bringing up that there were, you know, different kind of pantheons and subsets within the Egyptian mythology. And even if we go to uh, what's probably familiar to a lot of people, the Greeks and the Romans, well, you know, we had the three main realms of existence, you know, the sky, land, and the sea, and in the underworld, you know, split up amongst the three big brothers. Well, I mean, doesn't that in and of itself just say, you know, maybe the whole of everything is just too much for any one being? And I, I, I wish this translated into people figuring out that's why dictatorships never work, right. why they're not a desirable <laughs> state of affairs. But 
Oh no, maybe if we keep telling our stories and emphasizing this point, eventually the rest of the world will start to, to see it. But uh, one thing that I have noticed since I came to paganism is that as many uh, debates and sometimes personal falling outs that people have amongst them themselves is that there does seem to be more genuine tolerance, not this shallow, superficial, virtue signaling, nasty, saccharine, pseudo tolerance, but I mean actual tolerance of you know, people having very different views, looking at the stories and having very, very different takes of them, having different impressions of different deities, sometimes very controversially, as I am well aware. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> But there does seem to be at least a willingness to hear people out of saying, OK, you came to this conclusion. How did you arrive there? Um, do you think that's something that perhaps we could you know, begin to kind of I don't know if I want to say share because that just sounds a little too proselytizing <laughs> for me. But I mean, I suppose set an example uh, for the rest of the world saying, you know, this is how it's actually done. Um, you know, I, I have seen pagans actually sitting down and discussing topics um, like that where they disagree in a civil manner. But then I also see TikTok witches going after each other um, like rabid dogs. Um, so at, at some points, maybe the old school pagans, um, I'm not talking about our ancestors, I'm talking about the pagans right. that were practicing between 1950 and 2010. Um, the old guard um, and their tolerance and their understanding and their patience with matters of uh, discussion, you know, very civil. Um, I guess with paganism being online, like everything else, it's kind of led to a lot of uh, infighting, a lot of arguments um, in comment sections around and you know, that's something that uh, we need to move past, I believe, um, as a community online, although it's going to be very hard to get them all on the same page with that. It's, you know, it's yeah. not worth it in the long run to be the baddest witch in the room. I mean, well, I and if you actually are, you're probably not telling people that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> this is something I've pointed out to uh, very new seekers in the past because they'll they'll tell me about oh so and so is this big bad spooky witch and I'm like so you realize someone who has actual power is not advertising the extent to which they have and they're like they're not I'm like no. no because that wouldn't be very smart it's the craft of the wise not the craft of the magical muscles <laughs> just <laughs> tossing that out. Do you well, even lift, bro? <laughs> but I like what you brought about how I perhaps some of our technology has uh, exacerbated some of the communication problems within the community. But do you think that since now our technology is taking a little bit step further, like uh, we're talking right now through Skype, you know, we can hear each other's tones of voices, we can see each other's faces. It's not the same as if we just sat down around my kitchen table and had a conversation, but it's as close as we can get, seeing as how we're in very different parts of the country. Do you think that this part might be the key to helping us move? past some of that acrimony you talked about right yeah with a basic understanding maybe of uh how my husband and i we do readings and i'll do readings over the phone or through messages and i ask for their astrological signs i ask for their sun signs um to kind of get a, a sense and a feel of who they are and while you can't judge a person completely off of their sun sign, you can tell quite a bit about them. Um, and then you ask them, you know, oh, uh, I'll hear my, hear my husband ask, oh, you're a Pisces. Where are you in Pisces? And they'll give their exact birth date. And uh, depending on where they are in the month, they might have more influence from Aquarius or more influence from Aries. Um, and you know there's always the entire chart yes i know other astrologers might get on me for that for not mentioning yes okay uh, astrology is more than just your sun sign but uh, maybe uh when going through uh, an issue with another pagan it might be worthwhile to know, know a little bit more about them to see where they're coming from and i think pagans have more patience for that than a lot of other people do um 
you know, I'll ask somebody, you know, what type of uh, paganism do you practice or do you practice magic or, you know, what's your background? It's it's more kind of like interview based when you're talking with another pagan. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I see your uh, your videos, your channel, um, the work that you do. Yes, that's you present yourself very well. So oh, well, thank I know, you. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you're coming from. Whereas uh, some priceless person somewhere, like uh, say on Gab, I've had a couple of run-ins with some guys, um, where they'll just uh, post a random insult um, and they have no face and uh, nothing to, you know, say what type of paganism they practice. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, where are you coming from? Um, yeah. I think, uh, you know, we might complain about uh identity politics but just a certain amount is just okay just saying oh i'm heathen and i'm a rune witch okay i know where you're coming from or um i practice uh hermetic um or not hermetic but uh what was it uh hellenic reconstructions mm -hmm. oh i see where you're coming from oh you must do a lot of research into this i may want to take you more seriously when you're talking about uh, hera or zeus right uh, <laughs> you probably are <laughs> nose deep into a history book all day long to to know what you know. Um, well, and that can help because, I mean, if you just someone walks the room and just says, well, I'm pagan, like that could mean 10,000 different things. I mean, we have to have some way of narrowing down the frame of reference. Even if someone's eclectic, they're still probably going to be more drawn towards certain things than they are the others or say, oh, you know, I'm really good at reading tarot cards, but I suck at scrying and, you know, things of that nature. And then as you build up, you know, I, I hate to use the word profile, but I suppose that shorthand for dealing with another person, I think that forms a better foundation of being able to have conversations of any kind because, you know, when you're starting from absolute zero, I mean, what are you supposed to do with that if no one's giving you any kind of information? Right. It's also why for anyone who visits Gilded, if I start kind of applying someone with questions, this is why. <laughs> give me give me some indication of what you're thinking and why you're thinking it because I can't. Uh, I don't claim mind reading as a as a gift. I do not. <laughs> yeah, occasionally my husband will have a um, somebody I wouldn't necessarily call him a client, but, uh, you know, if we're, we're doing a public event, he's had people that come up and assume he's a mind reader when it says, you know, palm and tarot. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just expecting him to uh, be able to read their energy or to uh, just start telling them things about themselves like cold reading, which cold readings are, they're fake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other way to say that. Um, and uh, if you just have uh, all you need is just a, your astrological sign um, and a question. That's and then with talking with people online, other pagans, all you need to know. OK, what's your your path or at least one God you worship? And, um, you know, what it could be their astrological sign or, you know, even their favorite color. Uh, that's yeah. that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> Just something to build on. Right. So yeah. uh, talking about figuring out uh, who people are, um, I can't think of a single pagan path that does not have something to say about searching into one's own ancestral connections and that really being a starting point for finding about where you might find your niche. Now, of course, in the United States, a lot of people more and more often, you know, when you ask them where their ancestors were from, I mean, they might tell you, well, the four different countries that we know of, and uh, we th that's what we can prove. And if we go back another generation, it's closer to 50. And I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, that makes the search for who your ancestral gods are uh, kind of complicated <laughs> for sure. Right. But uh, how do you think, because right now with uh, the Church of Woke being so focused on, you know, the identity politics and, you know, seeing color as absolute race and not really looking at culture and, you know, having you know anything of European extraction essentially being the root of all evil, you know, rather flattering. We've become the devil. I think <laughs> that's a powerful psychological symbol for sure. But how do you uh, how do you think or do you think that paganism could provide an antidote towards that really twisted nasty version of of looking at ancestry into something that's a bit more healthy and sensible yeah something that's healthy and sensible um 
a long time ago, I did an ancestral meditation on, um, you know, who I was in a past life. And um, I was kind of transported in my meditation to um, kind of like a, a rural farm in Scandinavia where I was a man in this meditation. Um, and I had a wife and a daughter. And I had, as a man, I had a beard. Uh, so kind of connecting with, uh, you know, which pantheon um, one should feel drawn to. If you feel drawn to your ancestral pantheon, go ahead. If you understand your um, your ancestry or if you have a, you know, a family tree you can look at. And if you feel drawn to those gods, do it. Yeah, but basically open up a book on, you know, Egyptian paganism or or Norse paganism or Greek paganism and uh, or Celtic paganism and see if you're drawn to any of those gods and see if your ancestry leads you back there. Um, it's really that simple and it doesn't have to be toxic. Um, you could just simply say, well, my ancestors were uh, Norwegian and uh, I feel drawn to Thor or it could even be something like uh, my ancestors were Celtic, but I still feel drawn to Odin. Why is this? And you can look into, well, maybe because the uh, the Vikings were visiting Ireland during this period of time. That might be why. Visiting. <laughs> yeah, Perhaps well, leaving some DNA behind here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Vikings only took the pretty ones. Um, That's right. <laughs> Right. Um, but uh, yes, kind of gatekeeping based off of your ancestry is uh, there, there. There's this if if you feel threatened by somebody worshiping a god who they have no ancestral connection with, what, what what's what's your problem? You do your thing and you leave that person alone. Unless that uh, person is telling you to accept, uh, you know, Zeus says your Lord and Savior, I don't see a problem with it. Um, yeah, that, that would, uh, but if they start trying to force things, that would be something. But, but uh, I did a video recently about uh, ancestry and, and looking to that. And I said, you know, there are basically three ways of joining a family. Since everything is so family based, you're born <laughs> into it, you marry into it, or you're adopted into it. And, you know, and I mean, there's nothing to say that the gods can't say, yeah, you see Joe over there? I think he's a pretty swell guy. Let's work with him. Let's see what he's up to. <laughs> My first experience with paganism, I was not drawn to uh, the Norse pantheon. I was drawn to the Egyptian pantheon. And uh, Heru saw Oset, um, Horus, uh, son of Oset and Osiris, reached out to me. Um, through just reading a, a kid's book on Egyptian mythology when I was 12 years old. And I've still kept, you know, his statue in a respectful place while I do work with the Norse Pantheon exclusively now. Um, but uh, Freya Aswan said to me, and it just made complete sense, never forget an old friend. Yeah, I yeah. like that. I think that's beautiful. Let's see, one more thing before we move on to kind of the next topic is that I think that paganism, one of the big things we can offer is the idea of enduring wisdom. I've been doing a series on the Hophamal and on Celtic triads. I've read uh, some of the Stoic philosophers and so much of what they had to say is eminently applicable and practical in the here and now. And um, I think that would be well worth people reinvestigating. Um, besides the the... I suppose the collection of proverbs and sayings that I've mentioned. Is there any other um, kind of um, equivalent in other pagan cultures that you're aware of that you think might also have that to offer of just, you know, here's some nice, sensible, day-to-day -day living kind of advice? Yeah, um, there is in the Egyptian um, the 42 negative confessions, which is um, you have to confess that you haven't done 42 things in order to uh, completely get into the uh, duats, the uh, afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when your heart is being weighed on the scales, that's another thing completely against the feather of ma'at. 
but uh, you got to pass all these trials and the 42 negative confessions. I believe I have a video on it. Um, you know, it's like, do not steal, do not kill, uh, do not take offerings from the gods that are meant for the gods. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think do not kill is on there at least twice. <laughs> Kind of important. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like a predecessor of the uh, the Ten Commandments um, because you have to go before the gods and uh, confess that you haven't done any of these things. Um, and they're good rules to live by. They're, it's nothing negative. Um, it's sensible. You know, like the, the Havamal is very sensible. Um, or I can't think... There's another one that's uh, not coming to mind immediately, but uh, there's some good. Uh, ah, yes, that's what I was thinking about. The runic poems mm -hmm. of the uh, younger Thufark have some very good um, examples um, of, uh, you know, morality. You know, gold causes strife among kinsmen. A wolf grows up in the woods is fehu or fi. Um, and then also the uh, Anglo-Saxon rune poems. There's some good knowledge and wisdom in there. And along with uh, Hyalung, you're familiar with the band. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the songs that they do is they are chanting uh, the last rune in that Anglo-Saxon Thufark um, about death. And it's, it's very touching. And, you know, you read those old words translated to English and you just feel the ancient wisdom within them you know possibly because it's not in common English as we understand it now but it's not Shakespearean either but it's um it's kind of like uh, oh what would you call it um if a statue came to life at an ancient statue and started talking to you that it's like the same sort of energy um if you get what i'm saying i think so yeah was it uh was it pygmalion was that uh the story and oh the word popped in my head but i can't remember the the source of it okay <clears throat> my memory sucks but i do <laughs> i definitely understand what you mean and you know just the few examples we have briefly covered here this is why it antagonizes me so much when we're accused of having no moral framework it's like what are you talking about i've given more thought to morality since i became pagan than i ever did before <laughs> right i was a uh, atheist before i came to paganism um and before that i was what too young to even uh, understand uh, Christianity, where uh, my family was half Protestant, half Catholic, but they put me in a Baptist school for one year, and then they pulled me out of it because I was I hated it. I had to go to uh, to church service every day, uh, and uh, Baptist church service is just sterile um it's not like a catholic church service where uh you know there's Up pictures and down and drink. <laughs> right or images of the saints that uh you know for more more or less are um either the 12 signs of the zodiac uh you know jesus uh, apostles um and that's a uh, astro theology but uh or you know appropriated gods and goddesses of pagan um pagan paths you know where, where catholicism has that going for it no it was a bland boring lifeless baptism uh but uh, <laughs> yeah moving on from from that i didn't get any morality out of it i got more morality from uh reading about uh the egyptian gods and uh watching tv when i was a kid but uh they uh when we're criticized for not having any morality um that it's too easy to poke holes into their own morality mm -hmm. um, and they're not ready for that when they talk to us my off i often have insult them 
because, you know, they're insulting me. Might as well have some fun. Um, I often say, well, you're a poor salesman. You need to actually sell me, Jesus. Come on, sell. Yeah. Make a sale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've pointed out something very similar. You know, I'm um, I, I take a little bit more of the Ben Shapiro route of, you know, if you are courteous to me, I will remain courteous to you. But if you're mean to me, well, you know, it'll just kind of depend what mood I'm in, which version of me you're going to be dealing with from that point forward. Uh, but uh, when they get around to saying, oh, how I'm condemned to hell and, you know, the usual blah, blah, blah. I say, so why would threatening make me more willing to put up come 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 on your team why would i join your team out of fear you know if your god is what he claims to be and he's just all knowing and all present don't you think he would be able to know that i was a liar right so what would be the point of the exercise you know if if i'm completely wrong and i have to face him i'd rather at least say well i was honest about what i actually thought that that point either completely shuts them up or it gives them a brain fart, or then they just start telling me how awful I am, and then they go into, you know, whatever faults they find in my personal appearance, and I'm thinking, dude, I'm 41, I'm married, you're not on my list of people who I care what, whether or not you think I'm pretty, so just tossing yeah, that out there, kids. <laughs> right, like with that one guy on Mines a couple of weeks ago, uh, going after me, but then calling me, uh, basically misgendering me. <laughs> Oh, that's right. He did. I remember that. Oh, I tell you, that was a right one there. Whew. I was going to do my research before talking to somebody. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Boy, okay. yeah, that was, uh, you know, if, if they're uh, real blatant like that, I'm just, uh, I'm going <laughs> to have some fun. You know, if they're obviously not open-minded um, and up to, uh, especially if, you know, Christians, where they agree with us politically why don't we work on what we agree on not on what we yeah. disagree on that the infighting is so pointless and the infighting happens with pagans too like i was just saying a couple of minutes ago you know i get people occasionally on these sites that will just uh rip me a new one but i go and look at their page and they're posting similar ideas that i have and it's just like why can't we find a common ground here to agree upon something. I'm right there with you, but apparently, you know, agreeing with someone not about 90%, 98% of the way just isn't enough. We got to get that final 2%. <laughs> uh, and I, I keep yelling at the top of my lungs. This is why the opposition has gotten traction. Right. Now, if, if we're ready to start acting like grownups, I think we can make some progress. Exactly. So, yeah. So we've kind of wandered into this already is about uh, what, what do we think modern pagan practice has gotten right and where do you think we have gone off track? And you can address that in whatever order. <laughs> you well, care to. <laughs> what it's gotten right is we're returning to our roots of our ancestors, worshiping our ancestral gods. It's very fulfilling for us spiritually. Um, I mean, I feel a, a, a kinship with uh, my gods and I feel like, you know, I, I've been blessed by the All-Mother Frigg um, with a beautiful son and a loving husband and a beautiful house. And I'm able to do readings and all this um, and can communicate and reach out to people and, you know, create friendships, mm -hmm. um, spiritual fulfillment. Um, but let's say for... When, where we've gotten off track, you know, we've kind of, you're right, we've kind of uh, wandered into this is the infighting mm -hmm. or the uh, the TikTok, um, which is where, uh, you know, TikTok is, you know, besides being basically Chinese spyware, mm -hmm. uh, it is impacting our mental ability to pay attention um, mm -hmm. because these videos are only a minute long and it's impacting yeah. our attention span. Um, and it's just uh, junking up our heads, our minds, and where we would normally meditate, which is, you know, basically thinking about nothing or thinking about the same thing for an extended period of time, trying to induce some sort of uh, vision. With TikTok, you can't, uh, with that influence, you can't really do that. Um, 
And I don't know if you've heard on YouTube where the algorithms they use to want you to make a 10 minute long video. Now they want it like at least five minutes. And now they're promoting the, the uh, YouTube shorts, which are just a, another ripoff of TikTok. So it's people's attention spans are getting shorter um, and encouraging pagans to do TikToks or shorter videos. I get it for the God that they have created, the algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, that evil being where they've uh, uh, made it into a literal thought form. So many people um, have, uh, <laughs> have this uh, animosity towards it. But uh, the animosity towards it, but uh, yeah, we're getting off track with uh, that whole mindset of um, quick and shallow information where it's just so much deeper than that. And you see all the infighting or you hear about all the infighting on TikTok or you see it in other platforms where, yeah, I just talked about uh, the infighting on between uh, pagans that have similar political beliefs. I mean, I can get somebody that's a liberal that wants to uh, yell at me, that just mm -hmm. wants to rip me a new one. OK, yeah, I get you. I mean, that's just yeah. another Tuesday. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's yeah, that's Tuesday to us. Um, and I can see where they're coming from because I used to be. I used to be a liberal. I used to uh, <laughs> uh, before I moved up here, it's like being up here in this blue state in Washington turned me um, conservative because I was constantly surrounded by liberals <laughs> but when I was in Texas. I didn't realize how good I had it, but I was co surrounded by conservatives, so I was liberal. It was, it is what it is. But uh, realizing uh, how good I had it, and then I lost it, and then I, I want it back, but then, yeah, moving is uh, difficult right now with uh, inflation. But, uh, um, yeah, the, the biggest takeaway, I would think, uh, is where we gotten off track is... Uh, the embracing of um, shallowness with TikTok and uh, the infighting between pagans that believe in certain things or even the same God. Yeah. We waste so much time with that stuff and the the shallowness of the TikTok. I'd like to spend a few minutes on that because it is an incredible danger. We cannot do anything that we do, not as pagans and definitely not as witches, if we lack the ability to think. I mean, yes, I mean, for those of us who have the built in capacity or at least potential to practice magic, there are things we can do instinctively, but that's not controlled. It's not, you know, the, the same thing as us. We've having we sat down, we decided to like, like, OK, I am going to actively interfere and make a mark in X, Y or Z issue. And it doesn't teach us to exercise restraint because sometimes leaving something alone is actually the right thing to do and the best thing we could possibly do. But if we can't think, if we lack the ability to self reflect, if we lose that tie between cause and effect, well, I mean, it's all over. And I think that is what is absolutely under attack right now in our society. If we have to separate cause and effect, you know, for one, so the powers that be can continue to do horrible things with no accountability. And for two, so that people who have bought into this can train themselves not to wake up out of their indoctrination. So they'll just be miserable and spinning their wheels forever and ever and never understanding why. But they'll be very useful to be pointed in a target and say, oh, that's the person to blame. Well, no, they're probably not, but they're just running on adrenaline and emotion and frustration, so they don't really seem to know the difference. So I worry about life that too, same as you do. Right. Um, I also worry because sometimes I'll, I'll catch sight of some pretty long form discussions and I get so excited, but they get so caught up in, you know, discussions about grammar, this and and so and so academics said this or that. And I'm thinking, I, OK, this is fascinating. My brain is eating this up. But when do we get to the part in the discussion where we're saying how that makes a difference in their faith or did it change their mind about how they interpreted one of the stories or did that, you know, reveal something to them about the gods that they just hadn't really appreciated before where's that conversation because mm -hmm. i think that's acting as, against us as well 
Right, you're out, right. Yeah, our, uh, our, our mindsets are really impacted by the media that we're watching and by the discussions that we're seeing. Um, in, in some respects, I have to avoid um, certain uh, social media uh, posts or actual social, social, bleh, social media sites. Like I, I, <laughs> I avoid Twitter like the plague. Um, yeah. I don't look at other uh, pagans on YouTube except yours and uh, survive the jive. Um, if I'm going to look at other pagan posts, I make sure that it's uh, that they are not. I wouldn't say like-minded, but uh, alike in energy, where they're. Uh, they're calm, they're not angry, they actually have a historical backing if they're going to bring up something historical or if they're going to bring something up where it's, uh, you know, where it, fo more focused on progress, not focused on something in the past or, you know, something that other pagans are doing where they don't like it, like uh, that post that I shared with you about the Valknut. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I respect that the author very much. He wrote uh, an incredible book on uh, Norwegian love magic, which is just a bunch of folk spells, and they're mm -hmm. wonderful. And uh, you know, they there's all sorts of uh, accusations where uh, Wicca stole a lot from uh, voodoo and hoodoo. Well, most of those spells in there are basically voodoo and hoodoo spells, but they those people never had any contact. Um, mm -hmm. with patients, um, you know, Norwegians living in, uh, in their farmland in the middle of the mountains. But uh, yeah, the, if I respect um, the author, I'm willing to, this brings us back to the beginning of the conversation, mm -hmm. I respect them. And so I'm going to be patient with their uh, input. And this is, this is Jake. Uh, you want to Hello, Jake. <laughs> we have puppy content. <laughs> Come on, sit down, Mister. Yes, I know you miss me. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. This is Jake. Um, his name was already Jake, or else I would give him a more uh, pagan appropriate name, and not short for Jacob. <laughs> he's a beauty. Yeah, he's he a he's a he, he's a big boy. Um. But uh, there's all something that we can uh, share and learn from each other, um, even if uh, I don't necessarily agree. Um, I mean, there's only like certain um, event horizons where somebody could say something where I'm just like, OK, your opinion is completely trash. Um, and it's very rare that I get to that point with uh, you know, pagan content creators, although it's been happening more and more frequently with um, I'm seeing more sympathy from certain uh, pagans towards and I'm not going to say the word to set off YouTube um, and their censorship, but uh, it starts with a G um, and rhymes with Zoomers. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing more of that. And if I see that, OK, that's that's my cutoff point. If if you're sympathetic towards that, I I, I can't uh, agree with you because uh, I've got a little boy. Such a, it's such yeah. a clear cut moral line. I mean, this isn't a difficult thing. I mean, this is a pretty basic, decent humans of pretty much every culture and every religion, pretty mm -hmm. much few exceptions uh, kind of agree on this one particular thing. Uh, maybe that's a sign. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, as much as uh, I get harassed by Christians, there are things um, within, you know, the Christian moral structure, yes, that I can agree with. Um, and uh, they're wanting to protect uh, children. I agree with that. Um, and I'd, <laughs> I'd hate to think because uh, I do have to send my son to school for the first year um, until he's in first grade where I can homeschool him because we're not allowed to homeschool until first grade. OK, well. If they try to pull any of that at the school. 
you know, uh, on your video, <laughs> um, I, yesterday I said uh, something along the lines of uh, uh, pull the pagan card. I am yeah. going to pull the pagan card um, if they try that. And if they, before I pull the pagan card, if they say, oh, well, you're just Christian or whatever. Oh, oh, here, I've, I've got the, the pagan card right here. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, you don't it's believe pretty. me? Yes, I have an entire YouTube channel dedicated to it. To it. Do you want to look at that? Yeah, as a as proof. Because yeah, like you said, uh, paganism has no central structure. Okay, so uh, something to uh, that we have to sometimes prove to other people, or they. Because I've had people think that I'm joking when I say I'm pagan. Oh, as if people just make announcements like that for the kick of it. I mean, okay, uh, that is just amazing. I mean, it's irritating how we have such a long way to go towards being actually taken seriously. But this actually draws me into something that I think we have been getting more right as a community is that when I am seeing pagan content and videos, I am seeing more and more people that look like normal human beings. You know, they are you know, kind of wearing the same clothes. They're not wearing any kind of outlandish makeup or doing anything strange with their appearance. They're just, they're going about their business, living their lives, working the same jobs as everyone else. They just happen to pray to different gods than, you know, the Christians do. And right. I think this is a good, really good development because I, I've never believed that your spirituality should be about shock value or rebellion or being against anything or about making anyone or anything uncomfortable. It should just be... These are your honest convictions. So right. I'm, glad, I'm glad to see some progress on that. Oh, so what do you think the future holds for pagans and our various paths? Because everything is in flux right now. I feel like there's just so much chaos around right. us all the time that almost anything could happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. So say if... Uh a dictatorship came and controlled the United States and we were all forced to uh, either choose uh, one of the uh, three Abrahamic religions, although I never think this would happen um, because then the Christians would uh, start infighting. Uh, mm. <laughs> Which I point out to them on Gab whenever they start bringing that up. I'm like, you won't like it. It'll be worse for you than even me. <laughs> right. Yeah, we can just go into hiding, worship our gods um, privately and there you go. Um, we will survive. We have survived before. Um, we can take our tradition that's online and uh, have it verbal. There you go. Um, whereas, uh, yeah, the Christians will start infighting amongst each other. There'll be a, uh, a schism where uh, the entire state of Utah is shut down. <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 I have... Uh, Mormon friends, um, and I occasionally will run into other people who are not Mormon and just have nasty things to say about Mormons. And I'm like, have you ever talked to them? They're actually kind of nice. <laughs> Even though they're a little weird, they're actually kind of nice. But uh, if that, uh, because I point that out because I get that in hate comments from liberals all the time, you know, well, it's it's funny uh, the, the the Republicans will want to burn you at the stake in the center of town. Well, I don't think it's going to come to that. Um, what I think it's going to come to is uh, paganism will start to be taken more seriously, um, especially with all these pagan scholars. Um, Survive the Jive is one of them that is uh, should be taken seriously because he's. I think he has a doctorate. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I, I think, but, uh, or he calls himself a historian. I've never seen a, a, him call himself PhD, but, uh, and there's other uh, uh, pagan scholars um, that are actually practicing pagans where this, even though we don't have a centralized body, um, you know, like the Catholic church or whatever, um, we are, we don't convert. We don't, you know, seek out people to convert. Um, and then I see all these uh, young kids, you know, the TikTok, which is picking up paganism. And I think it's just a phase for them. Um, 
the ones that are serious are going to stay um, and uh, advocate for, for their rights to worship. And we do have a right to worship in America. We have our First Amendment. That's the most important. Um, well, I think it's tied for the Second Amendment for me, to be honest. But <laughs> It's like, take a favorite amendment right now. They're pretty intertwined. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, for me, um, it's it's my favorite um, because I I wouldn't be happy if I if I were Christian because I have to uh, get out um, this, this this feeling of uh, my intuition. I have to have an outlet for it. I don't know if you feel the same, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I have some some um, minor empathic abilities. I don't represent myself as a prodigy by any stretch of the imagination. But I was always picking up things intuitively uh, from a very young age that other people were not. And by the time I got to be a teenager, I realized I need to be quiet about this because I don't want these people thinking that I'm demonized or mentally ill or that something else is going on. So I worked very hard to suppress it, which is probably why I don't have uh, greater use of it now because, you know, it was stunted, you know, out of necessity, it was still stunted. Right. But um I had a few experiences right as I was getting ready to leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I thought, okay, I am not crazy. I don't think what I'm experiencing is anything to do with any kind of non-corporeal entity that doesn't mean me any good, so I need to find an explanation, and I knew they didn't have one. And I think that's a problem that comes up for the Abrahamic traditions more and more and more. It's because they are claiming that they have answers. You know, in paganism, we're saying, OK, we have questions and we're going to explore them. And, you, you know, hopefully in time you will find at least some of the answers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but the Abrahamics is like we have the answers. We have that ending of the book. You just need to do what we say. Well, when people see through experience that uh, those answers aren't really yielding the results, it's not as advertised. It's not getting the job done. And if we think back towards when we had all of those completely unconstitutional and quite frankly treasonous lockdowns and and we we saw so many of those churches and synagogues and and um uh mosques that's what yes that's what the muslims call them mosques mm -hmm. well they shut down they cooperated they obeyed the state and i thought okay if you people were as strong in your convictions as what you say you are, you would have told the state we must attend to our obligations to God before man. We're not going to force anyone to come, but it is our duty as the clergy to be available if they do. We have to answer to a higher authority, and they didn't. And when I occasionally saw the, you know, the a preacher here and a preacher there who like the one in Canada who absolutely threw right. the cops out of his church. I was cheering. I'm like, OK, I accept you as my spiritual colleague. You did exactly what you were supposed to do in the circumstances. Right. But, but the majority of them did not. And that and then after that, in meditation, I kept getting this visual of a tree that had been struck by lightning, fell over. And when I looked at it, it was completely hollow. And I thinking maybe that's them. Right. And, you know, does this mean that we have a revival of these faiths? Maybe, or maybe they have run their course and they're never going to be as strong of a force, at least not within, you know, our lifetimes or for a little while in time. You know, maybe, maybe this is coming to the end of the road for them and there's going to have to be something to replace it. And I don't want it to be the Church of Woke. So right. it might as well be us. <laughs> yeah, um, that brings to mind Alistair Crowley. Um, say what you will about him. He is a, a major uh, influencer on me. His definition of magic, I state it when I'm teaching uh, Wicca. Um, magic is the science of and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. That is the perfect formula for any spell. Um, but then he also goes on to explain that we have been in uh, the eon of Osiris, and Osiris uh, was pretty much sacrificed, or you know he was uh, killed and uh, resurrected uh, by his wife. Um, not really so much sacrificed, but there's other stories of sacrificed gods within uh, different pantheons 
um, in comparative mythologies. But uh, going from that, he said that we are going into the eon of Horus and the age of the sacrifice god, Jesus, is over. So it, it the natural end of Christianity, um, of the Abrahamic faiths, is coming towards an end where, like you said earlier in this chat, where if we are all to live together, it might be beneficial for us to view um, gods not as a centralized power, but as, you know, many different powers that uh, they're all good at one thing or two things um, where we have, you know, our states and they're good at one thing or two things. You know, Texas is good at agriculture, um, oil, cowboys, uh California is good for entertainment. Um, you know, I'm leaving out the liberalism here. Uh, entertainment <laughs> and agriculture. Washington uh, is good for rainforests and apples. And everybody has something to give. Um, whereas we just view the, the government as is all powerful. You know, there's, there's many parts um, and you see that with uh, DeSantis in Florida. I mean, he is uh, leading the way as far as uh, what we would like to see in a governor that uh, is not going to take, uh, not going to be trampled on. He's not going to let this centralized power tell him what to do. Or, you know, his people elected him for um, a purpose to do what they wanted him to do. So that, and, uh, you know, we worship our gods um, because we want a relationship um, and we want them to occasionally help us. And we also want to venerate them and to, you know, worship them for the great deeds that they have done. And maybe they'll uh, throw us, a, you know, a benefit. I want to say bone, but that just sounds mean. But, <laughs> you know, uh, through uh, um, offerings and rituals, I... Uh, was able to have my son Bjorn, um, you know, and I gave offerings to the All Mother Frigg. And, you know, that's a that's a more healthy relationship than just with one god. You feel like, okay, um, I need to depend on you, but you also allow this, that, and the other thing to happen um, negative. Yeah, and the other issue with that kind of monotheistic um mindset is that it makes their their deity so remote you know it's literally the unknowable you know you don't even have an opportunity to get a, a, a really a strong read on his temperament not like we do with the own gods especially if they get more interactive with us to where it's not just us reaching out to them but they you know you know, even just reach a little finger back it's like whoa right. okay I, I have felt just a glimmer of your energy, and that has just blown my mind, and it really puts an entirely different complexion on it. And, and there's benefits for for recognizing specialization, because like you say, you know, you went to Frigg for, for your son. If I had an issue going on in my marriage, well, I would probably talk to Frigg too. Right. You know, but uh, if I was having a legal issue, well, wouldn't I be better off, you know, uh, going to Forsetti? Or, you know, any other kind of thing if I was an ag dealing with an agricultural issue, which, you know, if my husband and I get moved out to the farm, hopefully in the not too far distant future, you know, I would think that Freyr and Freya and, you know, Thor and Sif would become a lot larger presences in my practices because I would be in their natural environments. And, I, you know, it's how is that any different from people having different professions? I mean, if you have an issue with your tooth, you don't go to your lawyer, not unless someone knocked your tooth loose and you're wanting to sue them. You know, you go to the dentist. And if you're needing flowers, you're not going, you know, to the lunch lady at the school. You're going to the florist or you're picking wildflowers from the side of the road. You know, different jobs for different purposes. And I think maybe, just maybe, in the midst of all of the insanity, even with all the threats of authoritarianism, we might get back to more regionalism, more individualism. I would love to see uh, all of the United States, whether we stay together as a union or not, start developing more of their own homegrown culture because each state already has kind of the proto inklings of, you know, different impulses. And like, well, we could be turning to some pretty cool stuff if we would just allow this process to unfold naturally. Fancy mm -hmm. that. <laughs> right. Yeah, where uh, there's definitely uh, 
doesn't feel like much of a culture up here in Washington State, but uh, back in my home state of Texas, yeah, the, everybody knows about Texas the world over uh, because of the uh, the cowboy stereotype. Okay, well, there's a stereotype or, um, oh, what's the word that we use? Um, archetype, mm-hmm. the cowboy archetype. Um, or the uh, the New Yorker is almost an archetype at this oh, point. Uh, yeah, I would absolutely say so. <laughs> the uh, the Florida man is an archetype. Um, you know the crazy I just want guy. to see him ride an alligator. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to see him riding an alligator through town. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, the the uh, even the uh, the funny New Ager uh from la that lives in a concrete jungle is an archetype at this point um or the uh it's they don't really congregate over there anymore but the uh the hippies that used to be in san francisco on hayton ashbury um they used to uh you know be an archetype but uh, they're they're slowly uh, disappearing those are the uh, old school pagans the old school pagans that uh, didn't trust the government that I was talking about maybe it's 30 minutes ago. The most sensible instinct a person could probably have, especially right now. Oh, I, why is it so, I, do you think that every, so many people have just gotten stuck into the mindset of like a, a battered spouse, that this is just an abusive relationship and they're still in the set of like, oh, if they're hitting me, I must have done something to deserve it. I'll try harder next time. <laughs> Like, ah. I, I don't know what happened in between um, Obama getting elected in 2008, where everybody was wanting the wars to end or on the left, um, and between 2016, where they were uh, wanting war. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I think it was what I heard something about uh Obama pushing legisla- legislation um, through that allowed, uh, what do you call it, uh, propaganda. Yeah. I think, yeah, propaganda um, got really strong overnight and people didn't realize what it was because we all thought that propaganda was uh, like Soviet propaganda or uh, Nazi propaganda. That's what we learn about in school and they show us pictures of it, but in a modern context, they didn't know what to look for. They didn't know the warning signs. Well, people that have studied history or just have a strong intuitive sense, they can say, oh, that is propaganda. You know, I, I, what point did I realize it was about probably about 2015 where I was uh, looking through Facebook and I was seeing um, uh, a woman with a protest sign saying that, uh, Uh, Oh, why isn't my birth control 100% covered by my insurance, but Viagra is? And I was thinking, Viagra's not covered by insurance, honey. What are you talking about? (laughs) I think that's that's where it started. Um, (laughs) Who needs facts when we could just uh, make signs and just pass it off as reality? Right, yeah, I mean... It is what it is. Uh, all we all we can do is um, speak our truths, which are facts, um, and uh, hope people listen. Um, and if they don't want to listen, you know, no matter what you, no matter what is right or true, you cannot change what people do. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, I wish someone would have said that to my mother back in the day. But <laughs> moving on. Um, Uh, One of the things I take great comfort in, even as things are falling apart, is the fact that all things do go in cycles. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that understanding, specifically from my pagan faith, I... I don't know if I would be any mentally better off than some of the people who have already legitimately lost their minds. Because if you really think that, oh, this really is going to be the end of civilization and uh, there's not going to be anything left and everything's going to go kaboom, well, that's not 
the best environment for people to hold on to their own sanity. But for me, I'm saying, OK, so uh, we're going into a rough fall and that'll be followed by a winter. But I know following that there will be spring and uh, I would prefer if I live to see that spring, but even if I'm not, well, I can be out there in the fields planting winter wheat so that when people do regain their sanity, they can see the work that other people have been do done and uh, they'll be able to kind of compare and contrast and say, OK, I'm seeing this common theme. They're talking about how this works. I'm going to try it and then things can start to rebuild, which is why I am constantly encouraging other pagans to uh, just have, make their presence publicly felt. Let the share their ideas just because you don't know where these little scattered seeds are going to end up and maybe that'll the ultimate end will be a society in which we're not just normalized, but uh, where we're acknowledged as a necessary component of the landscape. Wouldn't right. that be a nice change of pace? That would be. Yeah, there's enough. Uh references to paganism within our own uh, government um, and within uh, just common culture anyway. I mean, uh, we got to, I look at my phone and I see a, a symbol for uh, Bluetooth on there, mm -hmm. you know, the runes, uh, Hagas and uh, Burkana. Okay, well, there's runes everywhere and you know, as as people start to realize that uh, paidism isn't so weird that you've actually known about it all this time. But uh, that might be a little bit of wishful thinking for people to pay attention to. They just have to get used to the idea of pagans being around. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll that'll come with time, I yeah. think. Well, and I think we've already made some inroads on people no longer, at least not as many of them, seeing us as an inherent threat, apart from some notable people on Gab. And I keep telling them, my world doesn't really revolve around you. And from the way you're talking, if anybody should be worried, it should be me. Because you don't seem like you'll be very trustworthy with power if you get it. Whereas if someone like me had power, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to be so busy, you know, going into the books and saying, well, we don't need that law. Rip. I mean, Bye. that's more so what someone of my mindset would do. But I, I think maybe, I mean, there's still a ways to go, but maybe, maybe there's some, some glimmering hope out there. Right. Yep. All right. Well, is there anything else you'd uh, like to say or share before we uh, bring this to a close? Nope, I think that we had a very good in-depth uh, conversation and uh, uh, thank you for having me on and uh, to everybody watching out there, thank you for watching. Oh, I'm very glad that uh, you accepted the invitation. I've actually been wanting to do this for a while and I'm thrilled that you said yes. So <laughs> just to remind everyone, uh, where can they find you? Um, I am on YouTube, Odyssey, BitChute, Rumble, Minds, uh, Gab, and uh, I do have a Telegram as well. And I do have an Etsy page if you are interested in booking a reading with me or um, with my husband. My husband uh, specializes in love and relationship readings. And he's, you know, I'm a... Uh, I'm a certain level of reader, but he's an incredible reader. He actually uh, kind of saved my butt earlier this this week with a reading. Um, <laughs> he's been doing that for years. Um, but uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Awesome. I, I can also they can also find me on your uh, Gilded. Gilded, yes. I'm having such a hard time getting out of the habit of saying Discord, but we will get there. If we're on yeah, Gilded exactly. now. Gilded, gilded, yes. Gilded likes like the, us. <laughs> like the Gilded Tarot, just Gilded Tarot, Gilded, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Thank you again for joining me. Thank you everyone who's been watching, especially those who made it all the way through. You are rock stars. Come see us on Gilded, and uh, we will see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Ha 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 ha